Back in the ancient times of the internet, as in a few months ago, I created a contest to celebrate reaching half a million subscribers. Well, I hit half a million, and to celebrate this milestone, I gave you guys a contest. You, the viewer, were to write your own mini alternate history hub video. Write an alternate scenario based around a topic you enjoy, and if I enjoy it enough, it will be showcased in this video, right now. Three fans won, and now it's time to show what they made. The following scenarios are ones I found the most interesting and well written, and wrote 100% by fans. Do they need to be perfectly realistic? No, it's just for fun. The only changes I made are in grammar or to cut down for the sake of time. Alright, first up is Jason Wages. What if the War of the Worlds hoax? was real. On Halloween 1938, a young Orson Welles detailed the terrifying account of a Martian invasion of Earth over the radio. In his fake news broadcast, he described the resulting destruction as our conventional weapons of the era feebly attempted to fight off a technologically superior Martian force, only for the Martians to fall to the natural microorganisms and bacteria in our atmosphere. While the broadcast was part of the Mercury Theater radio show and was just a hoax, it was realistic enough to set off a widespread panic as some people across the country mistook the drama for the real deal. But what if the invasion was the real deal? What if in an alternate timeline, the events of that Halloween night had in fact actually happened, and a strike force of Martian war machines fell out of the sky nearly 80 years ago. How would humanity change following the War of the Worlds? For this scenario, we will use the version of the story as narrated by Orson Welles. The Martians are launched earthward via cylinder-shaped projectiles, impacting the world like meteorites. The Martians pilot towering tripod vessels highly resistant to weapon fire, armed with a devastating heat ray, and those people they don't outright kill, they gather as food. In our timeline, 1938 was a period of great change. The Nazis took their first steps of their reign of terror across Europe with the invasion of Austria, while the US was taking steps to bring itself out of the Great Depression. On the heels of an unexpected worldwide Martian blitzkrieg, World War II would end before it even began. Major cities across the planet would be prime targets for the attacks as fast-moving Martians aimed for large population centers, with cities like New York and London left in ruins and depopulated. Despite the severity of this attack, however, the Martian tripods are limited by their ground travel speed. The radio broadcast makes it clear they lack the ability to fly, and their ability to airdrop forces lacks precision, since they land in low-value locations like Grover's Mill, New Jersey. As the invasion barely lasts a week, it would be unlikely they would be able to saturate the planet with enough forces to kill off a majority of the population either. Major leaders like President Roosevelt or Hitler would have enough time to be airlifted out to remote, safe locations, while the tripods hoofed it across the countryside. Before the assault can truly begin to stamp out humanity, the common cold finishes them off. How would this affect the world around us? Well, first, the age-old question has been answered. We're not alone. There is life out there, and it wants to kill us. And eat us. The nations of the world would be forced to put aside their differences and galvanize against a common enemy. What's left of the Martian forces would be immediately collected by each respected government and dissected, both the tripods and their pilots. Their technology would be stripped and adapted to service humanity, in particular the Martian heat ray, as well as advanced systems like computers, robotics, generators, and so on. The space program would become the primary industry for the planet, with an emphasis on its application towards war. With its technological and industrial superiority, the Nazis would use the opportunity to place themselves center stage in the world as its savior realigning Hitler's nationalistic rhetoric and hatred to instead rally humanity against their nightmarish Martian enemies. The League of Nations had begun to show itself as a weak and ineffective governing force. Planet Earth would react as the United States had after the Pearl Harbor attack in our timeline, immediately mobilized for war. Knowing their vulnerability to disease, humanity would undoubtedly develop bioweapons with the intent of eradicating Martians. Following the discovery of nuclear fission by German scientist Otto Hahn two months after the Martian attack, the world powers would each begin an arms race to develop the nuclear bomb, the initial intent being for use against the Martians. Human society would be forever changed. Reverse-engineered Martian technology would set humanity decades ahead of where we currently are scientifically. 
Moon landings would take place by the late 40s, turning it into a forward defense base. In an effort to protect the people, governments would tighten control over their populations, much like the Nazis and the Soviet Union had. And until the Martian threat was proven eradicated, this perpetual state of control would continue indefinitely. Whether or not first contact with aliens would result in a unified Earth government like in Star Trek is up to debate, but odds are the major powers of the time would be unwilling to give up their respective influences and ideologies, intent that once the Martians were dealt with, they would immediately turn their advanced weapons against their original Earth-bound foes. Follow-up assaults by Mars would be unlikely. Arriving unprepared for natural airborne contaminants, the Martians demonstrated that bacteria was an alien concept to them, and would be unable to perfect defenses or sterilization procedures without samples to work with. Having their entire invasion force eradicated by disease in less than a week, Mars would view the Earth as a poisonous nightmare. Eventually, we would find our way to Mars, and Earth would finally get the retribution it sought for decades. Our first step on another planet would not be one of exploration and discovery, but of conquest and revenge. A step that would shape humanity for all time. The next scenario is from the Hero 136, who answers, What if Mexico attacked America in World War I? In 1917, Victoriano Huerta is returned to power in Mexico after avoiding arrest in America. With Mexican President Venustiano Carranza removed from power in a German-backed coup, Mexico is a threat to America once more. Promising to regain national pride after the bitter Mexican-American War, President Huerta allies with the Central Powers and attacks America after the USA declares war against Germany. The Mexicans struggle against a strong American defense and begin unsuccessfully with the initial invasions. However, Germany is able to supply reinforcements and advanced German weaponry for the assault against the U.S. Yet, the U.S. Army would be too well defended to push back further, and a stalemate would likely occur as Mexico begins to reinforce the newly conquered territory. Aid from Germany would start to weaken due to pressures in Europe and American convoy raids in the Caribbean. After several months of fighting, Texas would be reconquered and the U.S. would begin to push towards Mexico. The Mexican Army would be stronger than it was in the Mexican-American War and trench warfare combined with chemical warfare would cause the casualty rate to rise. Driving Mexico back would be a costly endeavor as the war would become a Mexican defense against the American counterattack. Following the recapture of Texas, America would blockade the Caribbean to prevent Germany from being able to assist the Mexicans and supply reinforcements. America would eventually occupy Mexico City. It's unlikely that Mexico would be able to succeed against the sheer size of the American army and industrial workforce. An unconditional surrender surrender would take place with President Huerta being removed from power for the last and final time. America would then place primary focus on defeating Germany in Europe. The war would end with an Allied victory and the defeating of the Central Powers. The aftermath of a second war against Mexico would be severe. The public would be outraged with Mexico and the U.S. would dismantle its government and strip away its armed forces. The Great War would be longer than it had been in our timeline due to the war with Mexico anywhere from six months to over three years. Despite all this, America would still have been a powerful nation at the end of the war, and it would have increased relations with the international world. The final scenario is from Lemurkin Stress, who answers, what if a virus killed everyone on Earth above the age of 15? In 2004, tensions in the Korean Peninsula escalate into full-scale war, which results in North Korea's loss. But before then, they unleashed a deadly, extremely advanced virus into South Korea. It spreads like wildfire, infecting the entire planet in under a year. How? It never displayed symptoms. On March 7th, the disease activated, instantly killing all of its targets. But the virus had two special traits. It only killed humans above the age of 15, and it drastically slowed the aging process of surviving children. On the first day, planes crashed, society stopped, and for the next 200 years, life went into your stereotypical apocalypse. But then countries began rising out of the rubble. The first was the reformed states of America, its capital and sanctuary city, modern-day Buffalo. The nation promised old American freedoms and prosperity, unlike the oppressive dictatorships and small city-states scattered across old America. With this promise and power, the RSA united the territory east of the Mississippi into its nation, but the leaders soon went power-hungry and formed a dictatorship. This angered the people, and Florida seceded. Florida won the Civil War that followed, and the United States of America was born once again. 
but the nation was plagued with strife. Two countries, the People's Democratic Republic of America and the Empire of America, battled the weakened U.S. and were almost victorious, having all but Florida under their control, until a new huge superpower saved the U.S the Texas Federation. The American-Texas Alliance annihilated the totalitarians. After a century, the Americans, Texas, and Californians met the Old World. Three nations prospered in the Old World, the European Communist Union, Central African Empire, and the UCSR. United Chinese Socialist Republics. After first contact, the ECU invaded the USA and partnered with the PDRA. The Texans devised a plan to defeat the Old World. First, they would use the fact that the Old Worlders did not know about the Californians, which would attack China and Africa in a surprise attack. Not an invasion, but an attack against known military bases, farms, and occupy some cities to make them seem like an invasion was coming. The next phase would be to help the USA rebels gain power, wipe out enemy Gulf fleets, launch an assault through Scandinavia and capture their capital of New Berlin, if all else fails, launch several nuclear strikes at them and kill as many as possible. Texas had 32 nuclear weapons in space. On September 18th, 2325, 4 million Texas soldiers and 2 million rebels invaded communist America and captured Sanctuary City resulting in the PDRA collapsing and a new American superpower being born. The U.S. Navy wiped out the Europeans in the Gulf of Mexico. But before the Texas invasion of Scandinavia, the nations of the world detected an anomaly near the orbit of Mars. Huge, orange, sleek ships arrived in orbit around Earth and sent the humans a message. Humans, we are the Atlanteans. We want Earth back. Riots, looting, and murder ran rampant. Alien bombers destroyed every missile silo, military base, and communication satellite on the planet. The leaders of the world decided that Texas would launch its space nukes at the fleet. The plan sort of backfired. The ships were heavily damaged, but instead of running away, they crashed into Earth. One landed near Longhorn City, Texas's largest city, one near a recolonized New York City, and another in the ruins of London. After three months of brutal fighting between the Atlanteans and Europeans, 2 million ECU troops died in combat. New York was liberated by the US, ending with the surrender of a thousand Atlanteans. After the defeat of Atlantis, a treaty was made, allowing them to settle Oceania. Anyway, congratulations to those who won. Pat yourself on the back. For those who didn't win, I thank you for simply participating in the contest. I read every scenario sent to me through my various social media accounts. Many were good, but three had to win. I love alternate history, a course with theorizing the what if, but also the fiction that is created from it. These scenarios didn't need to be realistic, you just simply had to have fun making them. Just as I have fun making these videos, and have reached half a million subscribers just from doing so. Here's to 500,000 more. This is Cody of the Alternate History Hub.